U.S. House of Representatives, and it gives the app's owner a big choice, sell or be banned in America. Young people have flooded lawmakers' offices and phones, begging them not to do this, don't ban TikTok, they say. 170 million Americans are on the platform, and now it goes to the U.S. Senate. I'm Harris Faulkner. You are in the Faulkner Focus. The bill gives TikTok's communist China-linked owner a choice. Divest or TikTok will be banned in the U.S. American buyers are already circul circling. But the price tag could reportedly hover around hundreds of billions of dollars. TikTok rolled out an aggressive campaign in the lead up to this morning's votes. It used urging young users in particular to call their Congress people flooding those phone lines. A show of just how powerful TikTok can be. House progressives took to the Hill yesterday in protest of the legislation. They brought up upset content creators who depend on the app for their careers and more. So many people, not only 5 million small businesses rely on it, but 170 million people rely on this app for more than just their livelihood. They rely on this app for their mental health. They've connected with people. They've made lifelong connections that wouldn't have been possible elsewhere because of TikTok, period. The bottom line is that Uda, user data rather will go to one of our top adversaries, an enemy in China. All the information that you load up in your TikTok account, all of your connections, all of that data goes to China. Fox has asked people about how they feel that their information is going to those hands. The consensus, no big deal. And I feel like TikTok is a good platform for many reasons. So I think it should, the conversation should shift more towards like data protection, data privacy versus completely like getting rid of an entire platform. Well, I don't know how much valuable information they're going to get from it. I don't know how much of a security threat that is just because I feel like the majority of TikTok users are going to be like of my demographic just going on and having like fun. However, former Vice President Mike Pence had a sobering comparison. He said, quote, TikTok is digital fentanyl and Congress Biden must act before it's too late, end of quote. In focus, the chair of the House Select Committee on China, Congressman Mike Gallagher. First, let's go to our senior congressional correspondent, Chad Pergram. Busy morning on the Hill, Chad. Harris, good morning. Congress targeted TikTok, the House voting to curb access to TikTok in the U.S. unless it separates itself from the Chinese government. Bipartisan lawmakers say the bill scoops up data. There was an organized lobbying campaign against the bill. They use geolocation data targeting minor children to then force them to call congressional offices in order to contend, continue using the app. And in doing so, these children called and they asked the question, what is Congress and what is a congressman? The vote was 352 to 65. The bill needed a two-thirds vote to pass. The threshold on this bill, 285. So the vote was well above that. Texas Democrat Jasmine Crockett voted present. There was an odd coalition of bipartisan lawmakers who opposed the bill. We don't need to be protected by the government from information. Some of us just don't want the president picking which apps we can put on our phones or which websites that we can visit. We don't think that's appropriate. We also think it's dangerous to give the president that kind of power. The Pew Research Center says 56 percent of all adults between the ages of 18 and 34 use the platform. Many young people get their news from TikTok. That's why members were mindful of what their constituents think about TikTok. I don't use TikTok. I think it's ill-advised to do so. Members of this body are famous on TikTok, and I think that's unwise. But I respect the choices of 170 million users in the United States. The president can do all sorts of things with respect to commerce, but cannot ban the free flow of information across international boundaries. Now, opponents of the bill wondered who would buy TikTok if it breaks away from China. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer will not commit to putting this bill on the floor. He wants to talk with his committee chairs first. Harris? Yeah, we have the list of people. I mean, they're putting up billions of dollars, hundreds of billions to buy TikTok. American buyers uh, potentially could have it 
have it their way. We'll see. Chad, thank you. Uh, let's get a little thank bit you. more of the debate that was happening just before the vote today on the House floor. Uh, TikTok is a threat to our national security because it is owned by ByteDance, which does the bidding of the Chinese Communist Party. This bill therefore forces TikTok to break up with the Chinese Communist Party. This is a common sense measure to protect our national security. Obviously, that's Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher of Wisconsin, and Free Press calls him, quote, the man leading the charge against TikTok. Well, he is the chairman of the House Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party, and the, uh, and the congressman, rather, joins me now. That piece begins with this question. Should a company under the control of the Chinese Communist Party be allowed to own the primary source of news for young Americans? It's a great question. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. And what's your take on it? Should they be? No, absolutely not. Uh, for example, we don't let them own TV stations or, or newspapers. What this bill does is take a very narrow focus. We are concerned with foreign adversary control of social media platforms, foreign adversaries as defined by existing statute, congressional definition, China, Russia, Iran, and North Korea. And that is the primary problem. When TikTok has become the news platform for young Americans, we have to question whether it is wise to have our foremost adversary dictate what news and information young Americans get. The potential for propaganda abuse is simply too great. That's why we took this common sense bipartisan step today. We had 352 members of the House of Representatives vote in favor of this measure. In the current Congress, it is very rare to get that level of agreement on That's anything. That's yeah, I mean, you, you had a 60% threshold for this, correct? Because it was fast-tracked. Uh, and, and by the way, why was that done? Uh, in light of time before we had to leave this week, as well as concerns over the Rules Committee, and because it came out of committee last week, 50 to 0, there was a sense that oh. we could go. On an iPhone, Copilot, your everyday AI companion, tapping Create Images, Go directly to the floor, and we had already, as well as concerned threshold for this, correct? Because it was fast tracked. Uh, and and by the way, why was that done? Uh, in light of time before we had to leave this week, as well as concerns over the rules committee, and because it came out of committee last week, 50 to zero, there was a sense that oh. we could go directly to the floor, and we had already gotten the unanimous endorsement of the committee of jurisdictions. Yeah, I mean, it is remarkable uh, how many people were on board with this. Now it goes to the Senate. We'll see what happens there. You know, it's this is also, I think, kind of stands out. TikTok has been the fork in the road, if you will, for President Biden's political concerns and his national security concerns. A New York Times headline, Biden the president wants to curb TikTok. Biden the candidate embraces its stars. Biden claims he backs the crackdown on TikTok, but his campaign is actually using TikTok, posting videos going after former President Trump's policies, taking victory laps on their own, and even sharing the president's Super Bowl pick. And the night of President Biden's State of the Union address, he invited dozens of social media influencers, many of them TikTok stars, to the White House for a watch party. I mean, can he have it both ways? Well, the way in which all Americans can continue to enjoy TikTok and post political commentary, post silly dance videos, or whatever the heck they want to post, is if ByteDance agrees to sell TikTok to a non-adversary entity. And that way, use of the platform doesn't have to be impeded. Now, I would still argue, as a parent, that social media use in general is not healthy, but that is a separate question as to whether a foreign adversary should control access to, uh, should control a, a news platform or a social media platform. So I would hope that the Biden campaign gets off TikTok. I doubt that they will. But I'm glad the president has signaled that he's willing to sign this bill, which would solve the problem for everybody. Yeah, and he's courting them in, in the meantime. And, and look, companies would love to have this one because it's got 170 million users already. And here's a list of some who've, who've expressed some interest to buy ByteDance, that, that communist China-owned company. Uh, Rumble, Microsoft, Oracle, Walmart, Kevin O'Leary of... Um, Shark Tank fame. He's also the chairman of O'Leary Ventures and Beanstalks. So if this changes hands, what changes about TikTok? Because that's the big question right now for people who use the platform. 
I think we would finally have transparency around the algorithm. And that was really where previous efforts to mitigate the threat posed by TikTok fell short. Project Texas, which was this partnership with Oracle, even proponents of Project Texas were forced to admit that ultimately control of the algorithm went back to ByteDance and Beijing. And without uh, some more transparency around that, you can never mitigate against the threat of propaganda on the platform. And for those who think that threat simply doesn't exist, I would point to what happened last week when TikTok forced a pop-up on all of its users asking for their zip code information and then calling members of Congress. We had kids calling members of Congress threatening to commit suicide oh, if we, we took action on the bill. Imagine if we were debating something even more important, like an authorization for war or removing permanent normal trade relations status with China. TikTok proved how the platform could be weaponized. And so I think yeah. if we had a divestment, we would be able to mitigate against that threat. You know, I, I, I mentioned previously uh, the usage of uh, from former President Mike Pence, the usage of comparing this to fentanyl. Uh, and, and that's coming from China, too. So bite Dan, bite. Uh, Excuse me. The company that owns TikTok is based in China. It's sharing information about all of us. If it divests or sells, it can keep TikTok. So now the pressure is on. What has that pressure looked like from, from American citizens on you? Because they're calling lawmakers. Well, certainly TikTok has embarked on what I think is really a historic lobbying campaign uh, against this bill or really any effort. I mean, throwing millions and millions of dollars at the problem, hiring former members of Congress to lobby on behalf of ByteDance. By the way, I don't think that should be legal. I think that's an abuse of your former office, but they're mm. throwing a lot of money designed to weaponize the DC swamp against us, as well as just not being honest about what the bill actually does. That pop-up I mentioned said that we were pursuing an outright ban. Of course that's not the case. That is an outright lie. What we are trying to effectuate is a divestiture, a change in ownership, and then again, People can continue to use TikTok for their small business, for their dance videos, for whatever they want to use it for. We're concerned about Chinese Communist Party control of the dominant news platform in America. Congressman Mike Gallagher, thank you so very much. Appreciate you making the time today. A big day on Capitol Hill. Thank you. Thank you. And we have